Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Breakfast with Sergio in this episode right from my studio. I want to show you how I prepare my paintings. This one's right here, the tall, flat paintings, how I prepare them for display and for exhibitions. So don't go anywhere. Check it out. Well, my friend, welcome back to my studio here in the fourth floor of the Jovial Center in Chicago. I have here with me some pieces that I want to show you because I, I've been getting a lot of messages from artists who are curious about my process. And I have done actually already a video on how I adhere paper to canvas. And the reason I do that is because I love paper, always love paper, and I think I will always love paper. So I love working on paper, but paper is fragile. Uh, it's hard to show, hard to display. So what I do is I adhere it to canvas. So once it is adhered to canvas, then I can show it like this. And sometimes I'm asked if, uh, you know, if the galleries accept that, do museums accept that? The answer is yes. I have shown in museums, uh, in different museums uh, in other countries, not only here in the United States, and never had a problem, as well as galleries I uh, work with have no problem displaying my work. It's all about presentation, how you prepare for presentation. If they were just loose sheets, well, you know, there'd probably be a problem with that. But uh, um, let me show you a little closer on how my work is prepared. So here's one of my works right here. Let me get closer, you can see it. So the front is the, the paper surface, right? Which I, use, uh, I usually use either Stonehenge or I use uh, mixed media paper. It has to be a heavyweight uh, paper. The back of it, as I'll show you, is canvas. So it's one full sheet of canvas that's been gesso, one full sheet of paper which has been gesso as well, just on the front side. And then I adhere it with acrylic gel medium. And uh, I use uh, you know, a white brush, apply it, and then use a roller to smooth it out, get all the um, air packets on it and it gives you a very beautiful flat surface. You gotta, you gotta practice. It doesn't happen the very first time. But sometimes you're gonna get bubbles, you're gonna get air packets. and So you, it's, it's a technique that I've been doing now for almost 20 years. So I've been perfecting it over time and it just works really well for me. Now, the way I clean it up for exhibition once the piece is finished is um, I add always and as, and as I'm making the work, I'm already aware of this, I have two inch uh, border, two inch of white border all around. So this acts all as a frame, as a separation, as a divider between the work and the wall and the environment, uh, as well as, you know, for me, it's almost like a window or a door to the other side. My work uh, usually has one figure on each piece, usually about my size, as you can see this one in the back. And the, the frame acts almost like a door, right, a door. So once the piece is finished, I clean up that border, I paint it over with white soap, because there always there is paint that splashes and goes, you know, I'm not that neat when I paint it. I don't tape it, I don't like to tape it, I just paint, I do the work, and then I clean it up at the end. Sometimes I like to leave some of those imperfections, I think those, that, that, look, that looks beautiful. Um, but overall, it's pretty clean. What I do afterwards is then I trim it, trim it to size. My typical width is 42 inches. I just love that size. I think it's a wonderful size. But I have pieces that are bigger and I have pieces that are more type multi-panel where I have multiple uh, works and to create one larger, much larger work. Um, the advantage of using a standard size for me is that then I can ship a whole show on a nice wide big roll uh, tube, you know, a big tube where I can roll the pieces and put them inside that tube, you know, nice and wide um, so that they don't get too tight. And it usually works really well. I have shipped stuff on the other side of the world without any problems. And it has come back to me without any other problems. So what I do for the corners is something I want to show you. Right there, let me see. I use a grommet, right? A, a ring that you can buy at the hardware store. They come in sets. There's a front, and there's a, there's a front, and then there's a back of it. And 
comes with a little tool that you can hammer it, make the hole, and then you know put the rings nice and tight. And all I do is I have them in the bottom, and I have them in the top. And here you can see all I need for hanging. All I need for hanging, my friend, is just a nail on each side. Boom, boom, and then two at the bottom just to keep it flat. And that's how these pieces are done. Here's another one. Done in the same way. Here's the nail. So if I were to take it down, super easy, very simple. Here's another one. So this is a process I've been, like I said, I've been working with oops, for, uh, for quite a while. It has worked really well for me. I really, really love working this way and I can ship it. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, Sergio, when you roll them up, don't they get um, kind of damaged, does in the paper and the adhesive pull apart? You know, what's the problem with shipping? And there's no problem with shipping. Actually, I'm gonna show you a very large piece that just came back from a show, uh, right here. And you can see how it's rolled. It's huge, this piece is, very, very large. Uh, let me show you. Very big. And the beauty about this is that there's no problem. There's no problem. It's great. Once I'm ready, when it comes back to the studio or when it goes to the gallery or museum or whatever it's going, then what I would do and what I would recommend is I always tell them, okay, uh, unroll it, put some weight on each corner, maybe like a book on each corner, and then just let it rest for a few hours, ideally overnight. Let it rest overnight. And what happens typically is that the paper and the canvas will relax to a nice and flat position. So when the time comes for installation, it's super flat. It's beautifully flat and it just falls straight down. And if you ever get some kinks, you know, here and there, you know, you can usually fix them and it works great. And then usually what I do is when the pieces come back from exhibitions, um, then I touch them up so that they're nice and clean again in terms of the edges. Now, what about permanent display? What if somebody wants to buy one of these? Well, when a collector buys one of these, I have usually three recommendations, three options. One is the collector may choose to show it like this, just the way I show you, and I have collectors who, that's how they hang it, that's how they love it, that's how they saw it at the show, that's how they wanna keep it, and that's the easiest one. I have also another option, which is to mount, actually, the piece to a board, mount it to a board, and then the third option is to create an actual box frame for the piece, which, uh, let me show you how that works. Okay, so here I'm gonna show you an option in which I actually build a box all around the piece. And that also works really, really nice. So there are different options, again, different ideas, which uh, you as an artist, you know, you can come up with ideas on how your work best will be displayed so that you can show it as well to your collectors when they want to purchase your art, particularly if it's not the typical, you know, like this, something like this, there's no problem, right? This is a typical work on stretch canvas. So it's easy to roll, easy to hang, easy to frame. You know, that's a typical. But when you do some more non-traditional ways, you gotta think about how is it going to be shipped, how is it going to be displayed, how is it going to exist on a permanent collection, on a permanent basis. So. Hope you enjoyed this little tour of uh, you know, how I prepare my work. I uh, would love to hear your, uh, your comments, your questions. Let me know on the comments. Thanks so much for watching, my friend. Hope you have a great and amazing day. And uh, thanks for checking out Breakfast with Sergio once again. Mm -hmm.